Today, we're talking everything drone parachute. I live inside my own world of make believe. When I hear the word parachute, though, it brings me back to my childhood memories. I have to be honest with you, because when I was a kid, I used to fly the hobby rockets and they would have a parachute at the very top of the rocket. Oh, those RC rockets? Yeah, so they're so cool. You would, you know, set it all up on this little stick and light it and it shoots and then the parachute comes down and then you go get it. Why, why, why do you need the parachute? Well, I always you thought the rocket do... was a one time long. You, but... you shoot it, it comes down, you go get a new one. That's no fun. Then you get to do it again. We just, we would shoot it like six, seven times in a day. You go get it, you come back, wrap yeah, it up. With parachute, how do you know where it's landing? That was a tricky part, but that was the fun part. You know, we weren't as smart back then as kids. We just kind of figure out where the wind's blowing. Hey, well, easy there. But no, in all seriousness, yeah, it was it was one of those things that, you know, back then it was fun. And now being in this industry, hearing that word parachute again, is kind of like, wow, I never thought about that for a drone. Now, what would you want to protect the most when you think about drone parachute? No, then? come on, that's easy. My, my drone, it's my asset. It's what makes me money. It's funny you say that because that actually wasn't our concern. Really? We were looking at drone parachute and, and drone parachute really wasn't new, right? And yes, this summer we've seen a lot of new brands coming out, which is what we're testing today. But really back when we were starting and flying heavy lift, we were already considering parachute back then. Because really to me, I, I wasn't even thinking about our expensive drone or even a quarter million worth of camera equipment on there. What yeah, I was thinking I is when, when, when you own a star shoot yeah. and I was worried about our home assembly both heavy lift drone falling on some famous actors <laughs> and then you're never gonna work in the town again that is ever. a good point but for me it would still be the asset <laughs> and then you know what after i submitted our first sfoc application right. uh, and back then this was back in the special flight operations certificate time right then I got a call from uh, our regional inspector from Transport Canada saying, look, you had great safety procedures covering the ground. Now, what are you going to do if your drone doesn't come down? If it's flying away instead of actually crashing down? Flying away. Up. Actually, what? That's true. I never thought about that because it could still continue to go up. Yeah, especially back in 2011, 2012, technology yeah. wasn't that reliable, right? Yeah. We just, we didn't think about really the airspace part. We were more considering the ground safety, not to kill yeah. any famous not directors driving. or actors. <laughs> or actors, yeah. So we had to consider, you know, second priority is, right, what happens if you have a flyaway situation? Right. And a parachute is supposed to actually stop the motors on your drone, huh? And then you have a controlled stop in a flyaway situation, which really that was ideal. And then the other question the inspector brought up was, what happens if you have a pilot incapacitation? You mean heart attack? Someone has a heart attack or heart attack? You gets know, attacked by a bear or something? <laughs> well, you know, I think you about are. it. Depending on where you're flying, right? You might be in an environment like a forest and you have animals and stuff that... Or a slope and then you trip over. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so regardless, um, another aspect of having a drone parachute, you know, ideally you want to have a simple deployment system. You flip the trigger and then still you have a controlled stop. So at the end of the day, it's all about you're buying yourself time. You have that controlled stop to manage the situation. Yeah. So if you look at those three we just talked about, Injuries, casualties to people on the ground, right? And airspace safety. I know what she's going to ask me. And potentially pilot, you know, being incapacitated. Yep. Where does your asset, where does the protect human asset fit in there? <clears throat> you know, it's very hard for me to say this, but obviously safety is always the first thing. And that's the first priority on the list, even though I think subconsciously I'm still saying my equipment. But definitely safety is your number one. Exactly. And from operations perspective, I mean, really the whole point about drone parachute is you want to manage risks. You yeah. never want to avoid or ignore risks, right? We just come up with procedures, use technology, and we manage risks. Yeah. I mean, you see a lot of people right now that unfortunately are flying in areas over crowds and they're doing it illegally. So this is a way where you could fly over crowds legally. 
Uh, that's a big interest we've seen basically since this summer, yeah. right? Um, because really since this summer, since Transport Canada had the new regulations in effect since June 1st, we were seeing a lot more new brands with drone parachute. And they actually got their system compliant with Transport Canada, which means if your drone is any of those on this listing on Transport Canada's uh, drone safety page, just under choosing the right drone, we can see if we search by fly over people, and that's the highest rating for basically the safety assurance. And we can see it there we have uh, several options, which basically are using DJI type of drones, but with the parachute manufacturer names on. And you can actually use those to legally fly, fly over, over people, which traditionally it was very, Impossible. very difficult yeah. to do. I mean, it's great for people like doing weddings or, you know, whatever special events or concerts and stuff like that. Now, Yifei, this is not something that is really of interest to me because of my line of work, but what does some, some of these parachutes cost? Right before the pricing? Oh boy. Okay, let's see it. Let's see the pricing. Oh my, Yifei, um, why do you have so many zeros on that <laughs> slide? That's the actual price. Wow. Um, now, how much how much did Mavic 2 cost again? Yeah, that's a little bit out of my price league, but you know, if your return on investment makes sense, then I would say go for it. And to me, this is why actually we reached out to both Indemnus and uh, Parazero this summer. Mm -hmm. uh, if I were to go buy a parachute at this pricing, I need, sure to see, I need to see this thing actually works, yeah. especially for a lot of our students and clients. So we reached out to both companies and said, look, we have the field um, just 30 minutes from Toronto, and we would really like to invite you to come and do a demo with your system so that potential users and, and clients can, can come it. in and see it. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, Indemnus had to cancel their actual live demo in Toronto, so they didn't actually make it into town. Uh, but Parazero, their distributor here, actually did three demonstrations, live demonstrations with us. And I was interested in seeing this because obviously I've never seen what a parachute would work on a drone, so it was very interesting to film. to you what happened with the three tests okay now to understand that first there used to be two options with the para zero kit it's called the astm kit and the non astm kit what does astm stand for it's a american standard test method okay. and that you know to be honest it took me a while to find the official explanation for that because on the actual astm international organization website they didn't spell out what ASTM stand for. <laughs> Even in About Us, it still doesn't spell out what ASTM stand for. So it took me a while to find it. Well, I know we have like CSA approved, which is Canadian Standards Association, but... This is similar. Hmm. Okay. Now, all you have to know is with the ASTM kit, that means you are legally compliant to fly over people. Okay. Non-ASTM is not legally compliant. And it's only about, it used to be only about one third of the price of the actual ASTM kit. Okay. Now, this is why for the first test, the distributor said, we have a non-ASTM kit. Let's test this one first. And obviously, it's a cheaper one to test as yeah. well. That's what we started with. The non-ASTM kit can only be deployed autonomously, cannot be deployed manually. How does autonomously work? We never got the full technical spec from it, um, but what we suspect is it's some kind of accelerometer that senses the speed. Okay. So when the drone is falling, it automatically it deploys. deploys. Okay. Yes, and keep in mind with the non-ASTM, obviously we suspect due to the sensor it has to work, then it has to deploy, right? So we suspect it takes longer. That's why they recommended the deployment altitude to be at least 100 meters and above. And we tested 100 this meters. 115 meters. As we saw, a student deployed just dropped like a rock. Guess from aviation accidents, what's the percentage that's actually caused by equipment malfunction? 30, 40 percent? Less than 10. 10 percent. Most of the accidents are caused by human errors or oh, operational issues. Damn humans. Now imagine with the non-ASTM kit, with the autonomous deployment, yeah. your only option is to cover equipment failure. We said, what happens with a drone flyaway? What happens with pilot incapacitation? right? None of that can be handled. 
by the actual autonomous yeah. deployment. And this is why you see only the ASTM kit being legally compliant, because it makes sense. You can choose to manually deploy the parachute. Mm -hmm. That's when we move down to the second test with the actual ASTM kit. Now, with the second test, the distributor said, again, given the first one failed, <laughs> what they wanted to do was called an arming test non-deployment test. And what it does is it arms the unit, but it doesn't deploy. And to me, it, it sort of makes sense because when you arm it, it actually sends out a really loud beeping sound, continuous beeping sound. As if that was the parachute. So exactly. It's like, okay. Now that test, we didn't see the actual footage. The reason being is they armed the unit. There was no beeping sound. The light wasn't flashing the right color. Oh boy. So they had to bring it back. And again, that was testing data. They had to send back to the manufacturer to try to figure out what, what happened. happened. And that's when we had the third test when they came back with the full ASTM kit, you know, the full armed unit with the full deployment. It didn't kill the motors. And again, this is a question we pushed several times and we never really got a straight answer is how do not. you, how do you kill the motors for um, a DJI drone? Right. Well, in the Mavic, you can't kill it anymore. The CSC? Right. Well, so here's the thing. You don't kill it from the actual Mavic controller. They said you don't have to do anything. You just deploy one button switch. You deploy oh. through the Para Zero controller. Yeah. Can I bring up that next part? So here it is, guys. This is the other controller that you have to have to make the Para Zero. Well, to be clear, it's recommended. <laughs> By para zero. It's not necessarily the only option, but this is the recommended one. Okay. So you have this, which has all these switches, which you have to figure out how to program to actually deploy the parachute. And then you have this, which is your drone DJI in this case. So I have to have this near me and I'm flying the drone and I'm, you know, obviously looking at what I'm doing. And in case something happens, I need to be able to put this down or if it's on a strap, just let it kind of go, pick this up, and then hit the right switch, and hopefully as I'm panicking, flick the right one. Most importantly, as I have this laying down, you know, maybe a little chipmunk runs over it and flips the switch trying to get a nut or something. But I mean, I have to carry these two around in order or have somebody else with me to be able to activate it. And how much does this cost? This is anywhere between three to $500. So that's on top. So it's separately, this is on top. Now, also the feedback we've gotten from uh, several of our students and clients who actually bought the ParaZero system, uh, not only they're talking about just having a bigger controller, it's cumbersome, they also had other concerns. First of all, this is a 14-channel Futaba controller. You only get to use one <laughs> to deploy the parachute. You don't get to use all the 14 channels. <laughs> and is it on the same frequency? It's actually on the same frequency as, as the DJI controller, which I, that makes no sense. Which again could cause interference, right? Now another thing is you have to learn how to set this up because when you buy this separately, it doesn't come with Pair Zero. It doesn't come it was, programmed. Yeah, it was taking you, forever to figure that out. You actually have to set this up, and you get to choose. You know what? Fourteen channel. Look at how many buttons there actually are. You get to choose any button you want to program, but out of all of them. You get to program just, just the one. And I just want to cut it. The reason why I didn't even have this kind of hanging off of me and have the other one, you know, you'd have two draw is because it just flopping around, you could just easily bump and hit the switch. So you literally have to put this it's down somewhere. Protected. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's non protected, not just from the pilot. But Imagine the several of our uh, students and clients when they fly this is because they're at an event or a location that's exposed to public. Right. When they put this down, they had to actually have a spotter, an additional or additional person if the spotters already used for other things, mm -hmm. right? And they basically have to have a separate person to keep an eye on this. Make sure public doesn't accidentally bump into this and accidentally you know, you flip the switch. Why can't they just come up with some type of little switch or button? Kind of like, you know, the, the older people that has that safety when you fall yeah. or have a heart attack. Something you, just, you can just clip on your yeah. shirt. Yep. And it'd be like, you know, emergency and you click it and you're done. I mean... That would make and sense, And include it right? with the, with the pair zero system. <laughs> well, that's not what we're working with right now. Okay. Again, controller aside, the other issue that we discovered was the actual battery. Now, because we did the deployment test with pair zero, you can see this is the actual battery inside pair zero. This is claimed to last more than an hour. 
An hour of battery yeah, an time. An hour of battery time. And you can't change the battery. Like how you change battery on the Mavic. Sure, you only have 30 minutes flight time, but you change the battery, you go back up right away. Well, I remember when we were doing the testing, they had to say, hold on, we have to charge it again because they were running it takes out of... It more than yeah. an hour to recharge the battery. Yeah. So one hour to charge that little battery, it took us like 30 minutes to charge the Mavic battery. And like I said, with the Mavic, you don't have to charge on site. You have a separate battery. Separate one, yeah. You connect it and you switch. With this, you can't. You have to You're stuck it. with one battery. You have to wait. You imagine at a live event, you flew for 40 minutes. So our feedback from actual users, it lasted less than 40 minutes. So it's about two batteries. Not even Not two even. batteries. Yeah. And imagine you fly for less than two batteries. Then you have to wait for an hour for the battery to recharge. The events ended as already. You, as you say, you're missing all the important stuff. Exactly. So that was an issue with the actual battery runtime of this drone. And again, the charge time as well. Now, also registration. Oh, Remember better. when we were looking at Transport Canada site and we saw that when you're searching Mavic 2, the original, your original Mavic 2 is registered as a DJI drone huh? and you get a registration number for it. The moment you put a pair zero on, at that point, it becomes a pair zero drone. Huh? Two, you have to have two. a separate registration number. Wow. Now, a lot of times people say, well, we don't, you know, fly with a pair zero all the, all time. the time. I don't fly over people all the time. Right. Huh? So when I'm not flying over people, I prefer to take just take the unit. Off. Yeah, take the unit off. Yeah. But at that point, you basically have to have a separate registration number. That's crazy. Yeah. So can I ask you a question? How is it in terms of insurance? Because now you have to obviously tell the insurance company that you have it. I would consider it's that... It's a modification, for sure. Right. But it should go down because now you have a safety item that's protecting the drone. Well, you would think so. Unfortunately... Mm -hmm. Gets better. Okay. Unfortunately, no. Your insurance actually goes up. I mean, we specifically Yife, inquired this you're with You're killing me here. Company. How does it go up? For two reasons. One is you're modifying an originally manufactured equipment. So okay. there's always additional risks with that. Okay. Two, you are exposed to more risky situations because now, uh, more, again, we said most of the people who fly this because they want to fly over people at public events. So again, you are going more often to, you know, bigger risk areas. But you're eliminating and reducing the other risk. You're managing. You're, you're managing. Only managing risk. You're, okay. you're only managing. But that would be my... no, 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 you're only managing the additional risks you're being ex exposed to. So the insurance company is saying without this parachute, you won't even go fly over people. But now with it, you are. Of yes, course. you're managing it, but you're adding it's, it's that. It's just like travel risk. insurance, right? You think you have all this insurance and... No, insurance companies. And keep in mind, here's the thing. With uh, Para Zero, they recommend not to do deployment test I, until you actually get pushed into, you actually use it and I disagree. required I have to situation. disagree. It's almost like they don't want you to test, so they don't want you to see it to fail, maybe? I, like, I don't know. Like, I why would you I'm not test it? I'm because if you test it, you have to send it back to them, and it's their labor fee they have to spend on packing it back. Yeah, but if this is an investment for your business and you want to make sure it works, to spend $100 to get it repacked again, it's worth doing. I would say from emergency standpoint, you know, like the kids in school, everyone runs emergency drills, right? You always run emergency drills because yeah. when you get into that emergency situation, like you said, you may freak out, right? You may forget steps. That's why you want to test all of this flow yeah. ahead of time to make sure that you can actually do it properly. You know that saying, right? Practice makes perfect. So if you really need to have the capability to fly over people, uh, obviously, you know, parachute is one of the very few options you can have right now. What what I would recommend is once you get the unit, read the manufacturing instructions. Do some testing, although the manufacturer says don't, but definitely do testing. Make sure it actually works. Now, who knows? Maybe we had maybe we had 40 units when they actually were set happens. there for it testing. Happens. You never yeah, know, right? Absolutely. So definitely test the equipment. Make sure that your firmware is up to date. Firmware is up to date. Yeah. Make sure you're familiar with it. Um, and to me, you know, it, it doesn't matter what type of equipment and technology. It doesn't matter if it works or not. We always know that uh, technology is improving, is moving forward. So, always bring you updates.